You bring your phone everywhere. Work, school, shh, the movies. Now you can bring it to an Xfinity store for an easy way to switch to Xfinity Mobile, a new kind of network designed to save you money. You can get up to five lines of talk and text included with Xfinity Internet at no extra cost, so all you pay for is data. It's never been easier to switch to Xfinity Mobile and keep the phone you love. Click here to see how. Sorry, I gotta take this. Restrictions apply. Limited to select mobile phones. Requires activation of a new line of Xfinity Mobile. Up to five devices per account. New Xfinity Internet customers limited to up to two lines pending activation of Internet service. If you haven't seen Bible Man and you haven't seen his weapon of choice, which is obviously a Star Wars ripoff, it is... It's the color of my urine after I take a multivitamin. That's the color <laughs> of Bible Man's lightsaber. Yeah. Does that give you the visual you need? <laughs> you did. <laughs> and you feel like a lawyer at Lucasfilm was like, all right, so we got all the paperwork drafted, but we'd have to watch the movie. And everyone was like, yeah, it's making me that fine. We don't own light. That's a silly thing. Let him have it. God awful. Movie, movie, movie. Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema for a hundred weeks in a row now. Ow! I was really hoping we'd uh, run out of movies by now, but we're not even close, and they keep making more. God damn it! Anyway, apparently I'm still your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is still my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. You know what we don't do enough at our atheist lair? What's that? Uh, hip hop dance numbers together. <laughs> Just up above nothing. We should do that more often. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and of course, sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Speak for yourself, Heath. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and up and down and throw up real quick. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, Come on. Okay, guys, by episode 200, this needs to be a visual medium, okay? <laughs> Just m let's make that happen. And, of course, sitting 1,400 miles to my west-southwest, we've got a special guest masochist for you tonight. Seth Andrews is the host of the Thinking Atheist podcast and YouTube channel. He's the author of Deconverted and Sacred Cows, and he is legitimate contender for nicest guy in atheism. Seth, welcome to God Awful Movies. So happy to finally have you on. It is an honor to be here for show number 100. I am... I'm a boy in your world today, so I'm just thanks for letting me play along. <laughs> Looking forward to it, man. Awesome. You guys heard him call himself a boy in our world. You heard him. <laughs> so the That's whole world plays sketch. That's consent. Thank Absolutely. you. <laughs> Thank you. I, mean, I, God, I need Andrew on all of these. Just, as a, just silently sit and just jump in and say, I, I want to be very clear that that doesn't, that was a joke that he said. I just feel there. like half the shit I say on the show tonight is going to end up as somebody's ringtone. I just feel that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying well, to gauge myself going in. <laughs> Yeah. Luckily for you, the the movie we watched today gave me plenty of ringtone, so you don't have to worry about me. I'm I'm set there. Um, now, of course, we've been on your show to review a couple movies in the past. It's basically going to be just like that with way more fucks. You know, I, I, I should say way more like the word fucks. I, I, Expressions. I just, or uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> either. I feel enough. like you're limiting this medium. And what? <laughs> <laughs> Again, wait until we get up to here on episode 100. <laughs> Well, you know, after they heard e Eli Bosnick on my broadcast, I had to remind everybody that, no, he does not have Tourette's. And they were really <laughs> relieved to hear that. So that's really good news, listening audience. I would be relieved to hear otherwise, to be perfectly <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched Bible Man Defeating the Shadow of Doubt. We did. It's season one, episode five of the Bible Man TV show that well it actually went TV? straight to video I guess. <laughs> but it eventually got picked up like ironically by the sci-fi channel so technically it's sort of a TV right. show um and it's the story of what happens when all your 80s sitcom money gets spent on cocaine <laughs> and alcohol <laughs> and Eli how bad was this TV show well if you like the Adam West Batman but you think a goat demon is trying to convince you God doesn't love you you will love this movie. It's like 50% SNL sketch, 40% in living color sketch, 10% just straight up hate crime. Just straight up like they did a talent show at a KKK rally. <laughs> that actually appears at one point in the show. It's the whitest uh, dance and rap team you'll ever see. Now, Seth, I have to ask, you were, of course, an evangelical Christian when this series 
quote unquote first debut. Is this your first run in with Bible Man or uh, are you, have you guys been acquainted before? Well, obviously, I graduated high school about a decade before Bible Man was introduced. You know, Bible Man came out in 95, but I was well into my career as a Christian broadcaster. So my introduction to Bible Man is normally when we were out doing stuff that was kid related. We'd have a broadcast at a bookstore that sold, you know, toys and and Jesus action figures and videos and music targeted to young children. And Bible Man was sort of part of the canon of this merchandise. And I remember even as a believer, I mean, I was a true blue Bible believing Sunday go to meet and believer. And even I remember looking at Bible man going, you could be shitting me. I mean, it's like, (laughs) I mean, it's like, it's like if, if you made a transformer out of nerf material, (laughs) you know, I mean, (laughs) I I don't really know how to say it. He's just, uh, he's just got a look of that is, I wanted to add, I want to add badass to Bible Man. Mm-hmm. It's like, have you guys ever seen the trailer for Machete that Robert Rodriguez did? Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yes. It says, if you're going to hire Bible Man to kill <laughs> the bad guy, <laughs> you better be damn sure the bad guy isn't you. I wanted that for Bible Man back in the 90s. We need a Christopher <laughs> Nolan gritty remake of Bible Man. This could be fun. You know it's bad when you're like, oh, I miss Veggie Tales. well you know pamplin was the organization that produced bible man and i knew them from a music standpoint they used to they were for some reason loaded you know christian music even back in the mid 90s was kind of a shoestring gig it was you know always boutique kind of record labels and these artists working on a very low budget trying to get noticed trying to get picked up by mainstream radio stations across the country and so pamplin comes in and they were showing a lot of flash and bling and they had all these real high dollar promos and they were whatever they were whoever they were they were well funded, but they only lasted as a music entity for about six years. They folded in 2001 or two, something like that. But they were sort of the production house that was behind Bible Man. So I'm guessing at some point they found success beyond music in the straight to video marketplace. 2001, <laughs> huh? So you're saying 9-11 brought Bible Man down. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I, Seth, I don't want to misquote you here, but you're saying <laughs> there are some good things about 9-11. That's what you came on the show to communicate. I have no recollection, Senator, right? I didn't answer the question. Thank you very I, much. I'm just sitting here reeling at the idea that this is what you get when you have a high dollar production company behind your thing in, in Christian cinema. Because I like, I mean, obviously Christianity has like the the crappy version of everything, right? They have their own crappy music, they have their own crappy museums, they have their own crappy wrestling and everything else. Yeah. Um, but yeah. but to find out that this is when they really <laughs> spent some money, that's that's amazing to me. They, I don't know about the video side, but the audio. The, the radio, the record housing portion of the, the company, relatively speaking, compared to the other music groups were, you know, they seem to be pretty well funded. Now, you know, they weren't Columbia or RCA or any of that, but it is terrifying to see what they came up with. But Bible Man, it's just <laughs> awful stuff. Well, I mean, how many Jesus CDs did you get for just a penny a month? <laughs> <laughs> that hits close to home, man. Uh, yeah, I, oh, I did Columbia for the House. young people, <laughs> yep. they used to mail you garbage for... Uh, <laughs> Way more than a penny a month. (laughs) And they just wouldn't stop. Uh, Now, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for uh, for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say best worst high tech headquarters where they were trying for that. (laughs) It's supposed to be this like super fancy like Bible man bat cave. Yeah. But it's just like old arcade cabinets. It's a, a play school chemistry set and just nonsense light bulbs everywhere. Uh, there's there's literally one of those uh, like the laser globe things from Spencer's Gifts. I, I have expected there to be a weather vane on it somewhere. Yeah. It's like a nerd kid's treehouse from 1980. It's supposed to be this high tech right. HQ. Yeah, like the plasma ball is one of the least useful things ever created, which uses electricity, <laughs> and it's right there front and center in the lab. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he he does have, I don't want to spoil anything, but he does have Jewish Siri. If you ever thought to yourself, hey, Siri, and you were tired of her answering right away, just like, oh, now you're talking to me? Now you're talking to me. No, I don't want to fight. I, don't I like Eunice. Fight the Eunice was my coach. favorite character in the film. Yeah. Uh, can I nominate it for best worst PSA take-home message? Oh. I mean... I don't yeah. want to spoil anything, but the message of this show might be the same words I hear echoing in my head that I try to dull with pills morning, noon, and night. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers. Just- <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, like take that where you will. I, I wanted to go with uh, best worst ability to banter with supervillains. <laughs> right? Like so bad. there are three fight scenes in this movie and, and I'm using fight seen in the loosest possible terms here that mostly consist of this guy and his, his nemesis uh, a, a Bible quoting at each other cleverly. And that goes as well as I make it sound like it would go. Yeah. I think if I had a nomination, it would be uh, for, for probably for Willie Ames for Bible man for best costume. As long as that costume is <laughs> Liberace's vibrator. <laughs> 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 I mean, oh, wait, he, he would win on that <laughs> caveat thrown out. It is impossible to describe how silly looking that you you have to watch it to to, to imagine. It looks somehow like it was carved out of cheese. I, right. and, yeah. and it the silliness is added to by the fact that they spend a tremendous amount of time with this muscly foam covered character just sitting and chatting with a little girl. <laughs> like it, it might look less silly if he was always fighting or zooming around, but he also spends a lot of time just like clumsily trying to fit himself into Indian style sitting, just like, oh <laughs> God, not as flexible as I was. So let's wrap, huh? <laughs> you guys see a little, uh, I don't know, a little styrofoam or foam flap on the shoulders so whenever he'd move his arms forward, you you saw just a piece yes. of the costume, just sort of yes. like if a light breeze can move your costume, <laughs> can move your armor, we may have a problem in the fighting of evil. <laughs> All right. Well, I got to say, we have been waiting for 99 weeks and counting to break this one down. So we're going to keep the break brief here. When we come back, we're going to delve into all the insufficiently self-spoofing buffoonery that is Bible Man defeating the shadow of doubt. Yeah, we're doing all the episodes. Oh, yes. So all make sure let's be clear. Every day. <laughs> and Seth is joining us. I have him. <laughs> I will find him and his dog and I will bring them. And your little dog, too. Hey, folks. We just wanted to take a moment before today's show to thank you. We know you come to this show for funny, and we're going to get right to that. But before we begin, I just wanted to take a moment to thank everyone who makes this show possible week to week. As of this recording, there are 1,621 human beings who are patrons of this show. I mean, some of you give less, some of you give more, but you and everyone who's ever shared this show, rated us on iTunes, or even just dragged your buddy at work over to your headphones to say, like, you got to check this out. I want to say thank you. You know, we were sitting around the other night planning our Seattle show, and I made a crazy billionaire money joke. And, and I realized sort of in a lightning bolt moment that if I had crazy billionaire money tomorrow, I'd do this. I do this for no money. I do this before I do anything else in the world. And I do it because I get to do it with Noah and Heath and I get to do it for you. It's funny, Noah and Heath and I, we get messages pretty regularly, astoundingly generous messages from folks who tell us that this show was the thing that made them laugh during a divorce or a death. Our show helped them confront the movie they saw as a kid that gave them nightmares. And, and each time we hear it, we can't believe how lucky we are that this thing, this silly, fun movie roast we do with our buddies helps someone get through chemo or even just a dark day or a boring commute. And... What I want to tell you is that you, for these 100 episodes, have also been that for us. You don't just pay the bills, though you do pay the bills. You don't just support the show, but you really do support the show. You keep us going. You give us hope. And on behalf of Heath, Noah, and myself, all joking aside, I want to say thank you. Here's to another 100, 200, 1 thousand episodes as many as you'll have us a million more god-awful movies hey folks just a quick reminder that if you missed us in seattle you still have a couple of chances to catch us live in the u.s of a we're going to be in austin texas on friday september 22nd and salt lake city utah on sunday october 1st for even more on stage shenanigans you never know what's going to happen at god-awful movies live and as we learned in seattle apparently neither do we and if the potential of eli's inebriated ass cheeks isn't quite enough to motivate you i should let you know that the weekend of september 22nd is going to be a great time to be an atheist in austin 
The atheist community of Austin is going to be holding their 10th annual bat cruise the following Saturday with a pre-cruise lecture from Mohammed Saeed of the ex-Muslims of North America. Tickets for the cruise are only 30 bucks for adults, and the pre-cruise lecture is free. So if you want to come see a shitload of bats with us the following night, be sure to check the show notes for links to more info about the ACA's annual cruise as well. And remember, if you miss us in Austin and Salt Lake City, you have to come all the hell way to Sydney to see us in November, and that's a long flight. And they have poisonous rocks there. So be sure to check the show notes for more information because, damn it, if I'm going to suffer through airport security and crying babies for this shit, the least you could do is show up. And now, back to the show. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to need all the 30 seconds before this thing descends into delightful stupidity. Okay, we're going to open up on Miles Peterson, who is dressed like a bespectacled Inspector Gadget for some reason, standing in the rain and losing his fucking mind. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, it's always a good sign when your hero's origin story is losing their fucking shit. Because <laughs> <Yeah, Like, right. laughs> Batman didn't like shit in his hand and smear it all over his face and he was like, how about this, Alfred? And he was like, no, man, we're making you a costume. Jesus. God. <laughs> There's no context at all for the opener either. The guys, no. just, they, they start on him standing out in the middle of a rainstorm. He's He looks like Ronald Lacey from Raiders of the Lost Ark, the guy whose face melted off. <laughs> yes. his, you know, the guy with the imprint in his hand. He's dressed like that. He's just they start on the guy out just wailing and clawing at the earth in desperation <laughs> in the middle of a type of whatever's going on and and you just think you know it, they just had to start somewhere so they chose that moment yeah that's <laughs> yeah it's, it's supposed to be what his name's miles peterson yeah is the, the mm -hmm. miles peterson story but it's clearly the willie ames story that's the, <laughs> the actors. i had wealth status I, I was buddy lembeck on charles in charge there's an eight there's a no scott bayo owes me sorry sorry and uh and i was in the rain and i found a, a bible in the dirt can we use that also, can, can we talk about this? Because the opening line of it, the, the VO says, he had it all, wealth, status, and success. Now, wealth and status equal success, right? Like, how do you have wealth and status without <laughs> success? I mean, I get it. It's Christian. They can't just say, and bitches or whatever. But, but like, what a lazy <laughs> list of three, right? Right. And the image for that, by the way, oh, is yes. a watch. Yeah. <laughs> well, and keys that was assume presumably yeah. to a very uh, nice and, car and an Apple IIe with a trackball yeah. on the mouse. <laughs> that was a rich person thing. In I enjoyed the uh, Harry Potter font on the Bible that he discovered in the mud. Did you guys <laughs> notice that? <laughs> I mean, yep. was Harry Potter even a thing in 1995? I do not know. But it's, <laughs> it, there's a magical sort of a thing about the way he discovers the book, the magic <laughs> book, right? Yeah, I so. thought it was going to be, uh, it's such a silly looking prop that I was like, oh, he's going to open it and it's going to transform him into Bible man or something. No, no, no just the silliest looking, <laughs> just a sarcastically made prop by Brian. Just, oh, fuck you. There's your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> man, you couldn't find an actual Bible? Nope, nope. that's what the Bible looks like. <laughs> right. And he's supposed to find it in the mud, but mm -hmm. somebody clearly freaked out when they're about to put a Bible in actual dirt. So they went with like cartoonishly bad prop dirt or whatever <laughs> it was. It's inside like a piece of fake tumbleweed. It's covered in <laughs> tinsel, like a paper snake pops out for no reason. <laughs> well, it's, it's really I think bad. it's I think it's fake dirt and a fake Bible. You know, they were really covering their bases. And now I should point out that this is just the like. 30 second hero introduction we get at the beginning right he loses his mind dumps out his briefcase claws at the mud screams and finds a bible in the mud and that's what made him bible man no radioactive <laughs> spider that's the backstory that's it i kept waiting for miles to look up at god and be like thanks for giving me something made of ink and parchment during a rainstorm <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use some tablets here, bro. I'm just saying, I know you do tablets. You do golden plates. You got just a lot of options here. You went with plastic, for God's sake. Give me something I can work with, man. At least treat this with the same respect you'd treat a, a good comic book, okay? So then we get this amazing title sequence. Oh, I, this fantastic. title sequence and theme song. This oh. is <laughs> Coke off a drum machine personified. Just... <laughs> Coming. One take, I'm not fucking doing this again. I promised you one take, it's the Bible Man Show. All right, I'm out. You can hear the door slam. Just oh. <laughs> It's so rough. It sounds like Saved by the Bell just like broke into a black guy's house and surprised the shit out of them. And they're like, sing with us now. And he's like, all right. 
I, I, I don't want oh, to do it. The, the lyrics of this theme song sound like they were made up while the guy was singing. I, I had to write these down. This is so amazing to me. Bible man's coming, so you better stick around. A brand new episode is coming to your town. See how they almost rhyme there? A whole lot of fun with the greatest book of all. The Bible man's coming, and it's going to be a ball, because that rhymes with all. And then, this, I, I love this so much. Go get everyone you know, because it's just about time for the Bible man show. It's the Bible, it's the Bible, it's the Bible man show. That's the rhyme. Right? They rhymed Bible Man Show with Bible Man Show. <laughs> Are we sure future Senator Kid Rock did not write this thing? <laughs> Don't joke about that, man. It's Michigan. That could happen. And, well, to be <laughs> fair, this is not the worst rhyming they do in this episode. No, it really nope. isn't. No, it's not. <laughs> I could just about swear I've heard this song used in Iraqi prisons, or at least I've seen it on <laughs> CNN. They use the music in Iraqi prisons. This is why we had to go and, and live. I don't know. There's something about it that does seem really lazy. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, someone was, was really congratulating themselves. And the truth is, I mean, this is the kind of thing that you might see, you know, uh, the most basic of creators put together just on a whim. There was no thought at all gone into it. No, no. no <laughs> like the, 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 It ends with, we're learning how to live and we're learning how to grow. It's storytelling, picture painting, grooving, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then Bible what? Man Show again. And, and everybody Bible get ready Man for show. Bible Man Show so that we can once again rhyme Bible Man Show with Bible Man Show. Also want to point out, written by, directed by, produced by, and starring Willie Ames. So, now that's not, a, that's not show. a credit. That's not a credit. That's an admission <laughs> of guilt. That's what that line is. <laughs> this is like Trump Jr. tweeting out the emails, basically. Yeah, you don't want to sign your name to this stuff, bro. So now the show proper starts, and it starts exactly where you expect it to start, a church. Mm -hmm. And in case you didn't get enough uh, like uh, of your Christian music, Phil, it's going to open up on the church's performing arts team. They're the best. Ooh. They're if this show had just been 37 minutes of them, I would have been just as happy Super with it. Super happy about it. Yep. That's right after oh. a Pastor Chris Berman from ESPN comes out. Did you notice that resemblance when he came out? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wow. Satan stumble and bumble and... Yeah. yeah. Back, 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 Dancing? back, gone! I gone. can't do Chris Berman, but that's, that's his shtick anyway. So. I certainly can't get high-pitched enough for the whoop anymore. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and, and so we're watching this, but at the same time, there's a flash of evil coming from the vent below the stage. Yeah. So the camera follows that down into the basement like it's going to do a reveal, but it doesn't. And, and you can tell it's something sinister because of the... Uh, evil clown on a very small bicycle music that we're hearing yes. as they get into the basement. You know, strange. I, got, I got kind of a flash when I was watching that segment. You know, having been raised in church, I don't know how many of you guys were raised, but, you know, they were always doing stuff for the youth. They were trying to empower the youth. We had some youth group with a supposedly catchy name, and, and they would have programs done by youth for the main congregation. And so when I saw those kids paraded out on stage, and they, they really do have that look. I mean, it's the look like, I just got my prison clothes, and now I'm heading out to the yard. That's the look all the kids had. <laughs> on stage that's real i mean that's exactly what it was like and i really kind of got like the chills because it brought me back to that time in my own youth when i was in church and they would have <laughs> us do these types of presentations they were awkward they were weird and at the end you'd hear that sort of weird church clap you know amen it's kind of a mix of claps and amens <laughs> so i mean whatever they were doing that that felt pretty authentic almost like they they just called the church and said hey when are you bringing the youth on yeah. to do their thing right and but spe speaking of prison clothes why are they all dressed like uh, Louis C.K. With the, <laughs> like what, what do you think is a good uniform for this dance team of teenage girls? Okay, uh, I got it. So you remember when Louis C.K. was at his fattest? Can we dress him like that? <laughs> all of them? <laughs> all wearing that size. Too, Giant well. black t-shirt and huge jeans. Yeah. I thought they all, they all had kind of a corn-fed thing. I mean, I literally thought if they could call this dance team the Children of Golden Corral, and that would be a great, <laughs> a great name for the team. <laughs> I, I just want to say, I feel like out there somewhere in the world, there is video, and it's the old school 80s video where the date's on the corner and because dad didn't know how to take it off, of Seth Andrews rapping and dancing to Armor oh, God. of God somewhere. And if someone has that, there really is very little that I would not do to obtain it. 
I just want to throw that out. We have um, a very specific set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> They're mostly juggling. I'm not. So, yeah, lie. right. It's kind of weird. I can also ride a unicycle. <laughs> um, so yeah, now that's just juggling with your feet. <laughs> I can juggle with my feet too. Um, so now at the, at this point, so we've got the the troop doing their dance number upstairs, but we go down to the basement where there's like the the green ooze from Ninja Turtles dripping down the wall. And I wrote in my notes, I was like, wow, this show has literally proven that watching paint drip is more interesting than watching the church program. <laughs> Congrats, guys. <laughs> uh, but this is where we're going to meet our villain. This is Shadow of Doubt. His name's Shadow of Doubt. Yes. Really? Like, I'm the penumbra of the First Amendment. <laughs> 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 really? Go <laughs> fuck Shadow of Doubt. Yeah, and the way we're going to meet him is by he crashes through a brick wall and does some. All right, like, I. Uh, this is a man who only covers his ass cheeks at weddings and funerals, okay? Like, <laughs> my, my, my note on this guy is like, he looks like the love child of Heath and Seth was dressed up for a pirate themed gay masquerade orgy. I can't imagine so? why they went. <laughs> Nothing right. wrong with that. We got some I work made, to I do. I actually wrote a note on that. I said he looks like the he looks like the illegitimate child of Ben Kingsley and the entire cast of Cirque du Soleil. That was the note I had. <laughs> I have him down as Gaiman Wayans. Oh, no. The entire, he's the, the fourth brother who just sat in the basement. <laughs> so everybody's being complimentary. Everybody's yeah. being complimentary of this guy's look. Agreed. Exactly. But yeah, so he breaks through and he's like, you know, he does this bad guy. Ha ha, I'm the shadow of doubt. I will be defeated by the end of this episode. And then we meet his assistant, Ludacris, who is apparently the comic relief of Meta the Meta comedy. <sighs> <sighs> You know who shouldn't involve themselves in meta comedy? Christians. Because <laughs> Ludacris <laughs> will spend this movie. Spoiler: He's just like a teenager in a mask who I'm sure killed himself within minutes of this production oh, being God. over. Who's like, <laughs> you're just an actor, man, in a mask, and we're just we're just doing this to keep kids amused, and they can't watch Sesame Street because learning leads to critical thinking. <laughs> So is Shadow of Doubt, I mean, is this a, a Riddler ripoff? What were they going for? Because I saw they were doing those little staccato mannerisms, but I couldn't tell what they were trying to emulate at the time. It was like half Jim Carrey as the Riddler and half like anti-black homophobia. They were like, <laughs> I always felt like Jim Carrey was a little too small in that part. Can you really, how do I say this, <laughs> Disney crow it up? You know, just like, <laughs> Yeah, this was clearly an actor whose problem with Jim Carrey is that he underacted so much. Um, Are you married to not blacking up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, the assistant is, it's so obvious. They're just trying to like pad. It, it's a kid pretending to not even try at the game. So when he loses at the game, he wasn't trying. Yes. He maybe has a built-in character as like a defense mechanism for the writers. That's <laughs> that's what this guy's here for. Right, yeah, exactly. As though he's trying to insulate this, the, how crappy this is by coming out and saying, yeah, we know. Yeah. We know. He's just We're like not. roasting the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, well, if your mortal enemy is a gay person who's smarter than you, then <laughs> you probably made this TV show. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, so now we cut over to the high tech Bible lab or Bible cave or whatever, where Bible man is getting a Bible alert. Uh, now this computer that is alerting him will say attention Bible man, a total of eight times before it ends. <laughs> um, and this is also where we meet, uh, Bible man's alter ego, but also his, his black friend coats. Coats. Why is Take Coates me. wearing Russian military fatigues? <laughs> what? Right? He's in a, Why is he's in a fully named- he is in his own fully lit office? Why is he wearing <laughs> Russian military fatigues? It's, it's not great. Yeah, the token black guy is wearing what white people from Kansas think black people wear, <laughs> which which would be like uh, like half Black Panther Party garb and half African warlord. Yes. <laughs> Like you know, like 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 be, like a beast of no nation. Can we make him look like a beast of no nation? That'd be perfect. And he has two medals hanging from his shirt. There's no explanation. Like, what are they? Like, I, I kept yeah. looking at him, going, "Congratulations on the spelling bee," because they, they look like the kind of things you would get in third grade homeroom for you know making an A on the test. Or but he's wearing these medals around everywhere he goes. Uh, fun fact, Coates is actually a prequel for that sheriff who spoke at the Republican National Convention. Not a lot of people know that, but if you 
watch the whole series at the end. He doesn't give a guy water and he dies and then he transforms. It's a really it's an interesting through line he's got in this series. <laughs> Which will follow, I'm sure, in coming episodes. Um, that's just my way of saying, yes, there are coming episodes. Eli was kidding. Uh, so now what these two are doing, apparently, is answering the phone, which is in, in this universe, it, it requires a four-step process, two people, and a password. And you'll need a vector lock on the transmission. <laughs> you have to vector lock You have to vector signal. lock phone calls. That's how that works. Also, by the way, his password is the Christian version of one, two, three, four, five, six, right? <laughs> Bible man's we password is it. John 316. <laughs> Jesus. So, so he logs in. This is where we meet Eunice, the supercomputer. Which, yeah, it's a highly advanced computer. We see the screen. It's, it's a game of asteroids. Yep. And also, <laughs> uh, it shows you the next block for Tetris. <laughs> it's important. I thought her voice was kind of hot. I'm sorry, I got to admit it. There's something about Eunice that uh, mm. just thought, you know, when the lights are off in Bible Man and no one's watching Bible Man in <laughs> Eunice, you know, I'm, I'm just saying something. Willie about, Ames, oh. Willie Ames actually married the the voice of Eunice. Really? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I like stumbled into that little piece of trivia, didn't I? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy Billionaire remake. We do her, but the voice is Eunice and the star is Bible Man. <laughs> All right, not into it. I get it. Fine, that's fine. <laughs> just a a dollar in the, the idea jar. It together in my head, I wasn't making a connection. Well, yeah, so was I, but differently. <laughs> <laughs> so now I need some clarification here because I feel like I'm going to be the only one who says this, and everyone's going to be really negative. Eunice is a vicious racist, right? Yes, that's definitely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Because here's the thing. He comes over and he's like John three sixteen and then and then Coates he they walk away and they're like oh there's a Bible alert and he's like all right uh, and she's like hello Bible man and he goes how come nobody ever says hello to me and there's this awkward pause where Eunice like displays a copy of the bell curve on her screen or something it was very <laughs> oh god it was just a strange moment where Eunice I felt like Eunice was not being honest. <laughs> So, yeah, they, they go through a little comedy shtick about how he doesn't know the magic word or whatever. And then we finally get the emergency message that took him 14 minutes and a little banter to unlock. Um, now, this will be from Pastor Rex, who is concerned about a young girl named Kyla. And the way he explains this is he says, lately, Kyla's parents have been struggling with arguing. <laughs> Conflict of the movie. Yep. This is a superhero taking this call. Yes. Like the bat signal goes up in the sky. Batman like blasts through the wall of a restaurant in the tumbler, and it's just some guy who like doesn't want to share his entree with his wife. <laughs> They're just like mad at you. I'm just saying you should order all the food you want. And like I always order everything I want. That's what ordering food means. Just like we didn't agree on sharing. You gotta I, confirm that. I love that that's your standard couple's argument. That that's hate, the first place. Come on. <laughs> Like what? It, just order what you want to eat. I order what I want to eat. If you don't finish, I'm helping. But we're not, we didn't agree. Well, for he was hard because she God orders off the kids' menu, and there's never enough food. He's engaged, by the way. Make sure you congratulate him on Twitter and social media. Can we not media. continue? Oh my God! <laughs> so shutting down that running gag. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it just got shut down. So the transmission ends. Um, Bible man is very concerned. He's never seen. Pastor Rex so worried before in his life. So I guess it's time for him to go into the Bible man chamber or whatever. I got excited about that, though. I mean, I was waiting for, is he going to slide down the chute or is he going to, is there going to be some sort of a rock and roll show that happens? I mean, did anybody else feel a sense of <laughs> real letdown? I mean, they just Yeah, when dissolve. the suiting up scene is just... Yeah, I'll go, I'll be in the other room. I'm going to change. Uh, it takes it takes a really long time. This thing is entirely made of Nerf. So, yeah. Uh, also, by the way, this is where we learned that the magic word was please all along. Does he get it? Because that's the... Any, anyway, yeah, no, that's all. That's all this movie's got to offer in terms of humor, guys. You just you know, loosen up. Oh, right? I I completely disagree. Ludacris will cut himself later in this movie. I'm just saying. Okay, it's fine. Though. I mean, <laughs> that's one of the great jokes. That's one of the funny things. That'll yeah. So now, Bible Man goes to Pastor Rex's church. Um, this is the first time, like in the film, we've seen it in the credits, but this is the first time we really get a good look at his purple and yellow muscle suit. I, I, I had in my notes. It's like Magneto asked his tailor to gay it up on a budget. <laughs> yeah, and he's he's like 
peacocking with his purple cape. Yes. Like, <laughs> like his golden chest plate and helmet are too subtle. And he's like <laughs> peacocking Flare with it. Chris. Flare it a little well, bit. Well, they got Kyla sitting on the stage at this point. Now, apparently there's choreography or dancers or something's going on all around her. But for some reason, she's like sort of splayed out on the church stage looking forlorn. And I'm like, how did you get there? Where are your folks who's supervising you? Right? Why are you just sort of drifting and and not being attended to by anybody? And then a guy, a guy wearing fake muscles in a mask walks up to her and he's like, So let's talk about the most intimate parts of your life. And this is not the least bit creepy. Right. And Kyla, Kyla looks kind of like, like, oh, am I going to get molested again? I'm having the worst <laughs> week. Awful. Jeez, Awful. This is like the third time. Seriously, I'm just telling at, at this point, ugh. Like, he literally Google. comes up there like he's awkwardly hitting on this girl at a bar. <laughs> so, so you, uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to sit half on the stage and half off because this won't allow me to lift my legs, this costume. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll look for recline <laughs> here. Those pants make you look medium, not fat. Is this working? Oh, Jesus. Is this working, little girl? I just read Do the game. Do you need to talk to someone, Carla? Do you really need to talk to someone? It's always good to talk to someone. I literally creeped out. I totally yeah. creeped out. God. Yeah, it's hard to imagine. Like, you know, I guess it's 95 or 96 or whatever when this was made. So maybe we weren't super aware of the child molestation thing at that point. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I imagine in retrospect, this seemed, seemed like a bad idea. Uh, so he quotes Romans, but the little girl is unimpressed. Um, he advises that she that she pray for her parents, you know, since that'll fix your problems right there. When he quotes the Bible, I really wanted Matt Damon to show up and just like goodwill hunting the shit out of him. <laughs> like, yeah, bro, I read Romans too. You gonna plagiarize the whole thing for us? Do you have any original? You studying theology? <laughs> Next, you're gonna be talking about some vicars. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, if anything needs a crazy billionaire remake, this is it, right? So, but the little girl is unimpressed. She's like, it feels like God doesn't even care. And at that uh, revelation, we sh we cut down to the basement where Shadow of Doubt is listening in on a red col solo cup on a string, right? Because this, <laughs> this show is not taking itself too seriously, guys. We know we're silly. It's pretty <laughs> funny. And this is also where we learn that Kyla just started having, it's not really the parents arguing that's bothering her. She found a, a Claire's gift box full of doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. She opens up the little box that apparently she found in the church basement that had all of the evil not believing in God in it. So Bible man decides he's going to go check out that basement, see if there's any evil supervillains lurking in there. But on the way out, the pastor stops him. He's like, is there anything I can do, Bible man? He's like, of course, you can wish in your head, dumbass. It's what we do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I wrote in my notes here. Yeah, can you think real hard about this little girl? And the pastor's like, way ahead of you. Oh, way gosh. ahead. No, I meant prayers. Oh, um, what about prayers it, about the little girl? <laughs> I just think about that uh, little, have you guys seen that meme where the guy's drowning and the dude's on the dock going, thoughts and prayers, and he's screaming into the top of his lungs? That's what I thought of when thoughts I saw the pastor. and <laughs> prayers. <laughs> So we cut down to Shadow of a Do uh, Shadow of Doubt in the basement here. Now he and Ludacris have to have a little bit of comic banter before the first big fight scene starts. Yeah, and he like he does his like, "Ooh, my plan will be complete." And again, Ludacris is just listening to Johnny Cash's "Hurt" loading a gun slowly, <laughs> and he's like, "I don't know, man. Like, what is that?" What does that achieve? And he's like, I, you know what, Ludacris? We had a whole meeting with HR about this. Why don't we just, that we filled three minutes, so why don't you just, you know, and he wants to, uh, Ludacris wants to incorporate holograms. And I just want to say, I too wanted to incorporate holograms into my profession and was shut down my employers. I'm not saying names, but it rhymes with boa fusions and someone <laughs> turned it down. Hey, I said 200 idea. episodes in, I want a visual medium. I didn't say I didn't want it three dimensional. It's still on the, it's still on the table. I love this ludicrous character, though. He's so good just shitting on the movie the whole time. Like, he might as well stick his arm out of my screen and close the tab of this movie <laughs> so I don't watch it anymore. 
I enjoy a Bible man entering the basement in this hue of blue smoke. Like, <laughs> you know, this is the staple of every church basement. Every lower level of every church is for some reason bathed in a hue of blue fog or smoke. <laughs> and, uh, and he walks in and, you know, the music swells and whatnot. And then he pulls out the lightsaber, which the is... The lightsaber! I don't know how to say this. It, it's... If you haven't seen Bible Man and you haven't seen his weapon of choice, which is obviously a Star Wars ripoff, it is, it's the color of my urine after I take a multivitamin. That's the color <laughs> of Bible Man's lightsaber. Yeah. Does that give you the visual you need? <laughs> you did. <laughs> And you feel like a lawyer at Lucasfilm was like, all right, so we got all the paperwork drafted, but we'd have to watch the movie. And everyone was like, yeah, it's they can, that's fine. We don't own light. That's a silly thing. Let them have it. So now, yeah, okay. So he comes down into the basement. He pulls out his lightsaber. He puts it back. Um, and then he, he runs into Shadow of Doubt. So this is where they we get the first fight scene. Not a whole lot of preamble. It's just, oh, you're a bad guy. I'll attack you with my lightsaber. Luckily for Shadow of Doubt, he too has a lightsaber because they couldn't come up with anything of their own. And I have to point out, there's this really weird choice here. Uh, when he gets Bible Man's attention, he does a ripoff of John Malkovich mocking Nick Cage in Con Air. When John Malkovich is like, nothing makes me sadder when the agent lost his bladder on the airplane. Right? That's what he's doing. He's doing a, a mocking of Cyrus the <laughs> Virus, but for Bible Man the TV show. <laughs> Wow. Uh, now I got to go yeah, back and read the catch. movie again. Good God. catch. Yeah. Go watch Damn. that scene in Con Air. That's absolutely what this actor is doing. <laughs> also, best rhyming in the entire film, including the theme song. Um, so, yeah. So, they, they, and as they're fighting, by the way, I should point out that they're, this is the first time we get their Bible quote banter back and forth. It starts off with uh, some, some digs against uh, Shadow of Doubt's teeth. I thought, hey, man, you know, some people have good genetics in terms of dental, and some people don't. You know, no reason to. You know, bitchy about it, but but then they go into the whole Bible quote back and forth thing, which is fucking insane. <laughs> yep. We also we also get my favorite line in the whole show. He goes, uh, "The shadow of doubts." Like, I'd love to stay and play Lembeck, but I doubt you feel the same. <laughs> Clearly, the line was like, "I'd love to stay and play Buddy" or something or whatever. And he threw in the guy's character name from Charles in Charge. Oh, is that what? Okay. Willie Ames is filled with rage at this point. <laughs> Just starts to actually fight his fellow actor. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Too hard. Look at the sign. What does the sign say? Never mention C and C. Never mention C and C. That's why I'm the writer, producer, director, lighter, gaffer, sounder. <laughs> Now, so we got to point out what's going on here is that as they're having this fight and this banter, a uh, shadow of doubt has some kind of weird sentient green spluge of doubt that will attack, will uh, uh, periodically attack Bible man. That's weaponized skepticism gas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so eventually this takes him out, at which point shadow just leaves and the scene is over. He's like, ah, oh, I've defeated you. You're standing here with your neck right before me. So I'm out. I will uh, see you at the next fight scene. Yep. I'm amazed at this, at the clumsy nature of this whole section for the reason that they're hitting you over the head with a two by four as far as the metaphor, right? Oh, look, he's plagued with doubt. He's over, mm -hmm. Bible man is overcome with doubt. <laughs> doubt yeah. escapes. Doubt has overcome. Doubt won the battle. And I, I just thought... This is, you know, first of all, I've done whole presentations about the beauty of doubt and how the church likes to frame doubt as either a sin or a weakness or, or uh, you know, you're you're under attack of the devil. At no point would they see, does the church like to frame doubt in a positive context? And I always say, when you look, if someone asked your kid to get in a car of a stranger, they would doubt that and they would that'd be a protective mechanism. If someone says that they can... You know, they have, they can turn water to wine and it's not Jesus and it's not 2000 years ago and you don't have video camera to prove it. They will doubt it and they think that's perfectly fine. But in the church, you know, they really would, especially when it comes to these young kids. And I actually grieved a little bit when I saw the actress that played Kyla because I thought this little girl feels like she's part of a story that is a moral story. That's a good story that's going to encourage other kids. And she's actually sort of caught up in this mechanism. And the message to her and to the viewers, especially at this one scene is don't doubt. Don't doubt. Even when doubt overcomes you and feels like it's won the day, mm -hmm. hang in there and go with the flow. Fake it till you make it. Say it, spray it, wheel it, deal it, make them feel it. 
And I found right. that kind of a tragic message, especially one targeted to kids. Well, you know, it's, it's so, I'm <laughs> exactly. so glad that we have your perspective on this because as I'm watching, the, this is obviously, that's the poisonous message that is the undercurrent of this entire episode. And I don't know exactly what the message is, right? Because like the, the message is clearly don't doubt, but it's like, what do you do in, in, instead, right? Because doesn't the message then become don't think? Yeah, no, that's exactly what the message was. And yeah. It's a message that I think he capped at the, when he did his little Jerry Springer last word stand up thing, <laughs> right. I don't know what you call that. But. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I don't mean to jump the gun, but I mean, throughout the entire thing, the mm-hmm. the subtext, the text and the subtext is God made a promise. Oh, your your parents are fighting and you're worried that the marriage may break up and you're really miserable as a human being and your life's not happy and you have no purpose and you're lying on the floor on the stage in the middle of a church where people are dancing around you. Well, it's OK. <laughs> it's OK if you don't feel, see, notice, taste, smell God. It's OK if God is not detectable in any way. Look, it's printed here. That God mm-hmm. is here, and that's really all you need to hold on to. That's what I took from that, anyway. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, like obviously, the messages don't think because that's the only message that they could possibly send to kids. Because you know, even six and seven year olds are figuring out that this is bullshit. So, yeah, as disturbing as it is, that was uh, over and over again the message. Yeah. yeah, he starts doubting. He just like takes a fetus out of his pocket, starts eating it. <laughs> all right. Oh, <laughs> I was going to use this for a sting video, but now I have no morals because I've been doubting everything, and here I am eating a fetus. This is what happens, kids. It's like a Capri Sun. You got to stab it, and then oh, it. Sh- oh, I missed. I mean, it's. I mean, it's tummy. It feels pain, you know. That's just scientific fact. But Peter Angelo, says don't it's okay. get any ideas, bro. We don't need a visual representation of that one, man. I mean, I Capri appreciate all the work you do, but uh, we do not need the fetus Capri Sun. Capri Sons and daughters. <laughs> It never happens. Seems like so, a weird challenge to uh, Angelo I don't have any, to me. Uh, is this a running gag? I, for, you know, I don't know. What, <laughs> Sadly, uh, look, no. I just want to go it sit in the now. corner and rock back and forth for a little while. You guys talk amongst yourselves, okay? <laughs> You're going to need a, a very long shower after this one. Yeah. So, so now we head back to Bible Lab, where uh, where Bible Man's alter ego is apparently analyzing the green splooge. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's and carrying he's a- so unsure how this is supposed to work. He's just like, run the run the computer on it. I'm the computer, <laughs> right? You are. <laughs> um, can you run it again? What would that change? Do you know what? I don't, Eunice. Um, you're being real <laughs> negative. And if you could just, <laughs> you and me versus coats. I thought we agreed. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to gang up on the black guy. Come on now. So, and speaking of coats, he comes in at this point. And he's like, Miles, you've been working on this for days. And I'm like, and you just now got around to having your computer analyze the substance. Are, are you sure it's been days? <laughs> yeah. And coats is just carrying a flask for no reason. Yeah, they keep doing science stuff like that. It's like, and this is what uh, grenadine looks like in a flask. What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Analyzing something? Also, is it just me or is Coates very clearly calling his gay lover to bed in this Absolutely. scene? Absolutely. That's what happens. Uh, thank yep. you. That's exactly. I wrote, this is very progressive for Bible man. Cause he's <laughs> like, it's just come to bed. Come on. In a few minutes. Shoulder rub. No, <laughs> don't take a few minutes. Come on. I'm going to bed. Remember Dr. Paulson said we should go to bed at the same time. <laughs> Anybody else think the computer looked like those uh, handwriting analysis computers at the state fair that they always drag around from city to city? I mean, you know, it's, I just caught that vibe with all the flashing lights. You know, I guess they're going to, have to trying to look like Mother from Alien from back from 1979. But I mean, it's just useless flashing things in big bulky boxes, essentially. Yeah. We require this to analyze the evil doubt substance. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly, exactly. Wait, these lights are <laughs> blinking out of sequence. Yeah. <laughs> Start feeding punch cards into the computer. Just <laughs> <laughs> and what is digital testimony? I, I, he, was, right? uh, he said something like, uh, I'm, I'm analyzing my digital testimony. What? what are, what's a digital testimony? And there was no context given that I could see. What is it? Yeah, well, I, I think it's the same thing as vector lock. It just said science word, science word there. And <laughs> they ran out of science words and had to go with testimony because they're like, well, that's Christian, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it's it's so um, I, like the techno babble in this show is priceless um, because it's like it's not things that you would need techno babble for. Right. It's just like answer the phone, but they don't know how to say that. And they have to say vector lock. Um, so, yeah. So eventually he agrees to come to bed with the black man. <laughs> 
I wanted him to come out wearing like a silk version of the same warlord uniform. Like, do that thing you like. Do that thing you like. I'll be Idi Amin. You be, uh, you be Ava Braun. We'll mix it up with the times and races. Jesus. Get weird with it. All so right. uh, a quick Bad. call back to all that great please humor la uh, uh, later. We go back to, to Kyla, uh, the very young girl that Bible Man has taken an uncomfortable interest in. Um, and, and once again, she's on the church stage like she was last time, but this time with a very porny, paint me like one of your French girls kind of a shot. It's <laughs> <laughs> really different, Weird. really disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she's having a flashback to her arguing parents. Oh, and I wanted these flashbacks to continue so badly, like flashback of the parents fighting and then a helicopter over Hanoi and then a little girl <laughs> holding a grenade pulls the pin. I know we have some editors who are listeners. You can make this happen. Just give me some of that. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. I kept saying crazy billionaire money. Like, we, all we need is the Bible man outfit. So crazy hundred air remake could really do the trick on this one. That would get us Willie Ames, too, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. So Bible Man shows up. Uh, Kayla is super pissed that he hasn't fixed her parents yet. Yeah, and you you can see him react in fear. She goes, you, and he goes, you promised you wouldn't tell. And she's like, you said everything, you would be okay. And he's like, oh, it's okay, guys. She's just doing her life. <laughs> she's just, <laughs> all right, everyone relax. Take so, that tone with me. Cut your head off with a lightsaber. <laughs> So, yeah, so she's demanding, you know, like, where were, was God last night? I prayed and he didn't stop my parents from fighting. And, of course, it, Bible man is trying to answer back with his standard apologetics or whatever. But at, at the same time, Shadow is downstairs attacking him with more of this doubt gas from afar. OK, just real quick. Are the Shadow of Doubt guy and Ludacris living in the church basement I, now I together? Guess I, I'm that, confused by what they're doing. <laughs> Yeah, you just thought about this more than the writer. Yeah. So, yeah, so the little girl trots off all bitchy because he can't fix anything. And then we get uh, the little scene where Shadow is like monologuing about how close his plans are to fruition so that Ludacris can make fun of him some more and explain how <laughs> dumb this script is. Ludacris might as well tag us in a post at this point. <laughs> to all of us. But now it's, t oh my God. Okay, so you thought it was bad before. But now it's time for Shadow to pull out his flasks of Acme Instant Minions, which he throws <laughs> oh. down and they turn into late 80s background dancers. <laughs> that means there's a dance number coming, y'all. No escaping it now. And it is amazing. Like, Seth, you, you recommended this months and months and months ago when people first recommended this movie to us and I was like, oh my gosh, we gotta do it with Seth. And Seth, I, I gotta say, I, I don't wanna be uh, too aggressive here. I needed some kind of warning that the devil had a thriller-esque dance number, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I just needed to medically prepare. There's... <laughs> There's a clash of so many things that should never meet in that scene, right? Oh I mean, you've got the sort of evil-esque back backup dancers who are vaguely reminiscent of the Bride of Frankenstein. Did you mm -hmm. catch that? I mean, they've yep. got the hair and the, the, the white the stripe, hair yeah. and all that, and, and they're in they're in tight clothes in something that's they're in very tight spandex and something that's targeted to very young children and i'm uh, you know i'm thinking well you know build your target audience of young males i guess you're going for that and yes. uh, i don't know it was, it was just awkward i felt like they were it was um it was a clash again of things that she really never meet i don't know anybody else catch that yeah i mean like i, I honestly feel like this guy <laughs> and rap probably are two things that should never meet <laughs> yeah um, also th all the rhymes they used were were things that should never meet <laughs> I, like like again you, you know you said it earlier th those the the uh theme song was not the laziest the rhymes were going to get not even close it gets real rough here oh, yeah the rough. title of the song as i as i recall it was doubt is out this little doubt disco that they're doing and was, uh, and it was called Doubt Is Out. I'm guessing it was available on sort of Bible Man, you know, eight track or uh, yep. whatever they're pretty good out there. And uh, you, you want to steal from CNC Music Factory. If you're going to steal from Thriller, you also want to steal Everybody Dance Now. But everybody make you sweat. Doubt yeah. Now. Everybody Doubt that, Now yeah. is what they went uh -huh. with. 
This, Very clever. this feels like a weird legal challenge at certain points, right? Doesn't this movie <laughs> feel like they like they got an Andrew and he was like, oh, no, I'll, I'll do everything for free. You guys are a church. And they were like, really? M-I-C-K-E-Y-M. What are you doing? Would you, no, just, just nothing. Nothing. Well, <laughs> <Smile>. okay. <laughs> You've got French. <laughs> but see, here's the thing, and and I think this is this is really common when you have this uh, this Christian uh, uh, media, what, whatever the type of media is, right? Like they're counting a lot of the times on the fact that people won't sue them because they're Christian, right? Like these T-shirts that you say see that have like the Jesus pieces or whatever, they you know obviously Reese's could sue them for that, but that would make them look bad because they're suing church groups and stuff like that. So over and over again, you see churches really abusing the goodwill of companies that would probably get. You know, a lot of negative press if they tried to sue people out of using their stuff. Or if they uh, accused certain movie producers of a crime they didn't do. And <laughs> yeah, that also, that also, as we found out, is not Apparent, um, Apparently a good that's thing. a whole thing. So speaking of those rhymes. You're absolutely onto something when you talk about how Christian culture likes to copy pop culture. You know, when I was a broadcaster, it was whatever's hot on the radio. Within six months, there was, if not three, there was a Christian equivalent. If you went to our bookstores, Christian music stores and whatnot, they had people ripping off everything from Coca-Cola. They had somebody rip off the Tide logo, you know, mm -hmm. washes sins out, you know, makes you feel fresh. They would steal those lines. They had, um, instead of Got Milk, they did Got Jesus with the same fonts, the same layout, the same artistry. They ripped off Starbucks. They ripped <laughs> off all these. And USA Today actually did, and several other people did, some research on where these sorts of, um, I'm just going to call it brand theft items came from within religious communities and in the religious marketplace. And... Noah, you're absolutely right. The consensus was that many of these companies did a cost-benefit discussion, and they realized that the PR, the bad PR they'd get by suing somebody in the church or religious institution who was using their message to sell Jesus. Oh, they're not making that much money. They're not that big a pain in the ass. They just let it go for fear that they would look anti-religion and they would have a huge backlash in a, a monstrous religious, uh, monstrous, well, in many ways, in a huge religious <laughs> consumer base here in the United States. And, you know, it, it's kind of cheap. I mean, there's a saying that says, why create mediocrity when you can copy genius? So you find people in the church who are not creative enough to go out and make something from scratch that ex is excellent and unique. They merely find what's popular. They copycat it. They make some money off of it. And they get to play the religion card if anybody threatens to sue. Yeah, and, and keep in mind that this is for-profit shit, right? Like, it's not yeah. like they're giving this away to the churches or whatever. They're selling this and making money on it. So, yeah. 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 Uh, also, real quick, can we talk about a couple of the specific lyrics in, oh, in this song? Oh, please do. Okay, so at one point they say... He's both a verb and a noun. They're talking about shadow of doubt, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. When you say shadow of doubt or shadow of a doubt, those are both nouns in that case. They're Is like, yes, right, right? <laughs> both those can be nouns, both can be verbs. Those are both fucking nouns in that case. So you're idiots. Um, another thing, he... He eats his carrots and peas they, is yep, another rhyme that they use. That. I have um, questions. Do, oh, do you have a question about that? That's not... Yeah, well, why? Reasonable to you? Because they needed something that rhymed with ease, yeah. you see. Fucking typical atheists and their beef stew. Gross. <laughs> now, really? Here's what? You know, I don't know why that reminds me of that. What was that t-shirt? It was a maybe it's a church marquee, and it said one cross, one spear, three nails equals four given. And, you know, Christian yeah. Genius was like, no, it's five given, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so happy about that <laughs> here's the lyric that confused me the most <laughs> i bet it's the he, last one yeah he's my favorite villain something something you will be illin no, no, no. It? this is the line i went back and checked this several times to make sure <laughs> he's my favorite villain if you don't you will be illin what what if you like, don't what I don't know. I, I feel don't like I'm. Know. I feel like I'm being threat? yelled at by someone who runs a bodega. Just like if you don't, you will be ill. I'm so sorry. I don't have to use a credit card, man. I have cash. I'll go hit the ATM. Just like this all if feels you, very upsetting. Don't what you will be right? ill. In. If you don't just, what? There's no context whatsoever. For I even went back to the previous lines to see. Oh, is he continuing a thought from before? But no, he's not. 
They just, yeah. And I, I think they have no idea what illing or don't means. So at this point, as we're watching it, as I'm watching this, my wife comes in the room and I've got my headphones and I'm watching it on my computer and she just sees the look in my on my face and she goes, <laughs> what the hell are you watching? This is mid dance number. Fantastic. So I remove my headphones and I let her watch the end of this thing. This this whole little dance number that Shadow of Doubt does. Her jaw is on the floor. <laughs> she goes to walk out after it's done. And she, the only word she uttered as she left was traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> That was her one word breakdown of the film. Such a weird scene. They have a really weird picture in their head of atheists. Like we're doing it. <laughs> like they're just picturing like Seth in his basement with like a fucking cauldron of beef stew, apparently. <laughs> and he's doing atheist hip hop with Ron Ra and Matt Dillahunty. Like really weird fucking picture they have. Unless you guys did that, in and which case it's an accurate been, picture. I don't know. I have I have no recollection. Senator. Can, can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. <laughs> oh, if you do, oh my goodness, we get a little Hemet in there. Hemet does a Bret Hart from the ceiling, just <laughs> comes on down. Get some Dillahunty coming out of the stage. Richard Dawkins rides in on a white horse dressed like Christopher Hitchens. I'm into this. <laughs> Everyone's committed. I've All right. <laughs> All the votes. <laughs> While we try to set that one up, I guess we've earned ourselves a quick break. But first, I got to give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will Kyla warm to Bible man's horribly inappropriate advances? Will Ludacris eventually just say the Eli Bosnick story and reveal this as the farce it is? Will Miles and Coates cut the tension and fuck already? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the repetitive and deeply unsatisfying conclusion of... Bible Man, defeating the Shadow of Doubt. Hi, I'm Shadow of Doubt, and this is my sidekick, Ludacris. I'm, I'm actually just an actor. Okay, uh, Ludacris, so wacky. Actually, uh, I, I'm meta, and by interacting with me, so are you. All of this is scripted. Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. I, I just feel like our wacky antics are here to put a relatively gentle spin on a pretty insidious message, you know? Okay, Ludacris, that's like um, a, enough. Like a children's show telling kids not to think for themselves? That's pretty messed up. So, Okay, Ludacris, here. good. That's enough of the antics. We're... This is brainwashing. Right, good. <laughs> I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Why, hello there, Kyla. Hey, Baba Man. What's the matter? I guess I've just been having doubts. I mean, what does it all mean? Well, remember, in Corinthians 31.7... Yeah, but, but doesn't the Bible also say slaves should obey their masters? Well, well, well yeah, it, 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 it does say that. Um, I mean, but I guess we're all slaves if you think about it. Slaves to our jobs, slaves to our relationships, slaves to our own minds. The only real freedom is death, right? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I think uh, maybe... It's I, I don't remember what it was like before I was born, but I know it wasn't painful. I think I'm going to go. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. Seth had a chance to escape and didn't take it, so we're going to return to the action <laughs> post-dance number with Bible Man returning to the basement lightsaber already drawn this time. No, I actually almost sent you a message at this point in the video and, <laughs> and almost said, thanks anyway for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny you would say that. I almost thought, I cannot finish this clip. <laughs> you know, I just remembered how much bigger my show is than yours, so bye <laughs> I'm desperate for the exposure, so here I am prostituting myself for the sake of the show. I'll tell you I'm what, amazingly be. enough, we still haven't gotten one of those. I'm sure of that every time we bring someone on the show that I'm going to get that email saying, woo you didn't warn me enough. Yeah. So, so, yeah, okay, so now without preamble, Bible Man comes out and just, like, pulls his lightsaber out. They start fighting again with more of this Bible quote shit talk. And I, I should say also on the fight choreography, this is basically like watching children play with Nerf swords, <laughs> right? Like yeah. they're, they're clearly not trying to hit each other. They're trying to hit the other sword. 
It's Heath uh, and I fight over the check at lunch with more viciousness than <laughs> all the fight scenes in this movie. And cooler well, it swords, help too. It, but it, between blows is the swords lock. They always sort of chat it up. They chat yeah. with each other. And this is the point for me where <laughs> Willie Ames attempting to sound badass. I mean, he, he has a voice, which I was trying to think of what his voice sounded like. It's the same sound you hear when somebody flies a mini RC helicopter over your back porch. That is what <laughs> Willie Ames' voice sounds like when he's trying to be tough. And, uh, so, you know, they'd, they'd lock swords and he would say, you know, Romans or or John, or he'd quote a scripture out of First Timothy. I don't remember mm-hmm. the specific references. And the more he tried to deepen and make his voice sound more authoritative, the more I thought he sounded like a weed whacker. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> he sounds like all the mean impersonations of white people got together and formed Voltron. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's this great little homophobic moment in the middle of this fight scene where Shadow kind of goes in for the kiss. He goes, Miss me, miss me. Now you gotta. Oh, never mind. That's so gay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I say crazy billionaire money. What we do is we remake this scene for scene, except for right here, it turns into hardcore gay porn and we just throw it on YouTube. Don't let anyone know. Ooh. I, yeah, I really wanted them to kiss there. And then Shadow just he just keeps saying doubt over and over. Bob Man starts doubting his sexuality. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It says in Leviticus twenty thirteen, and he just kills himself with a big stone. <laughs> <laughs> now you've just spoiled the end of the series for us. Yeah, but Bible Man confirms here that he will never renounce his faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, so the, Shadow, realizing this, has to pull out a couple of more of them minions. Now I want to point out we spent a lot of time. A whole musical number, in fact, setting up these minions, right? Like this was going to be a big deal. And setting up a dance fight against Bible Man. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Don't do it. So disappointing. Nope. He throws the minions out. Bible Man hits both of them with his lightsaber and they die. Okay. That was yep. important. Um, and then, so it, uh, Shadow of Doubt wanders off. Bible Man prays to God to forgive him for doubting him. Yep. This seems like a weird one to me. Uh, so with that, we literally couldn't think of anything else, so we just replayed the last fight scene scene out of the way. We head back to Bible Lab, where Coates has made a breakthrough. And he's so dismissive of Coates. Yes. And it feels so <laughs> racial. He's like, Bible man, I think I've figured it out. No, doesn't matter. Would you say that if Eunice suggested it? No, I mean, if Eunice suggested it, I'd probably <laughs> listen. But no. Yeah, well, the, what we're supposed to learn here is at this point, the doubt has gotten so bad, Bible Man is even doubting himself. What? Yep. <laughs> and how, how do they not have, like, a faith-affirming musical number here? Right? Like, 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 George Michael comes out, gotta have faith, faith, like, something. Oh, so Ludacris good. pops up. That's, that guy was actually bisexual, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that song's not about religion. Maybe just think it through. <laughs> And I actually had a moment here where I thought we were going to have a positive message because he's like, he's doubting himself and he and Kyla both doubt themselves. And I was like, oh, it's going to be about believing in yourself. And nope. <laughs> nope. That, not is, the that is not the road we are being led down. It's, it's, no. it's the literal dumbass opposite. Yep. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't believe in yourself. Yep. Co- yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. Coates, Coates then opens up a box and he's like, look, it's a little box filled with tiny copies of the God delusion or something. I don't really... <laughs> I don't know. Well, he's got this great line, right? Because uh, uh, Bible man says at this point, he's like, whoever this is, he's affected my ability to reason. I'm like, that is that the word you were going for, man? <laughs> I mean, he did, like, in the way a good teacher does, I guess, affect it yeah, but not negatively. And, and now we get the best plug in any media... I have ever seen of everything ever. He <laughs> logs onto the computer to analyze the box filled with the little fighting God copies, right? Mm-hmm. And the screen is on a Christian video game, obviously sold by this company. <laughs> and Bible Man's like, hey, is that a fun game kids can play at home? And he's like, it sure is. And he's like, sorry, that was just on the screen. Anyways, and the movie never, I wanted Ludacris to jump out so badly and be like, really, guys? Really? You couldn't just throw a copy of the game at the screen? 
Cut <laughs> makes the breakthrough, and I know that you know you've got Bible Man or you got Willie Ames's character. Miles is watching him over, and he's really impressed with his discovery. And he actually says the the scripted line, which I guess from the opening credits we know was written by Willie himself. He said, <laughs> "This is swell." <laughs> <laughs> I thought, where are the the remaining two words that are missing, which are golly beef, because that's the kind of language, you know, this is swell, golly beef. <sighs> yeah, well, I mean, what do, you, what do you expect from a writer who at one point has the line, what is it, like, I, I know you're concerned for me, but I'm concerned for that little girl. Uh, we, 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 but we all had notes on that. Somehow we skipped it earlier when the line came up. But uh, yeah, so they he, he found the little box. And they analyze it. They realize that shadow, that this vapor, this green splooge or whatever, is an emotion intensifying vapor. It's not a vapor, by well, the way. It's, it's a solid mineral that sublimes into yes. poisonous <laughs> doubt gas. <laughs> that, that's, that's the evil plot here, just to be clear. What if we just bring up the problem? We're doing the doubt gas. We're doing the fucking doubt gas. I built the thing. I found these minerals that you can sublime into a ga green gas. The whole thing. <laughs> well, I love to, because this is where, like, first of all, it was Coates that made this breakthrough, but then Bible Man kind of takes over to explain it to Coates, you know? But what he does, he's got it. He's doing that, like the teacher, like trying to bring you to the answer dialectic or whatever. And he goes, think about it, Coates. What's the one common factor between me and Kyla? The one? <laughs> the two white American middle class Christians of the same denomination? <laughs> this, it's a long fucking list, bro. <laughs> Syphilis. No? <laughs> oh, God. Cut. Cut. New one. New one. <laughs> Stop it, Coates. Well, and apparently the answer he was going for was that both he and Kyla have feelings. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I, want, I wanted Coates to be like, I have feelings, man. Like, I don't <laughs> sure you do. Sure you do, Coates. Ah. <laughs> uh. So he goes, he goes at this point, he goes, Coates, Bible quiz. You know, so Coates puts on his thinking cap. He says, which proverb tells us not to trust our feelings? That would be, I believe, Proverbs 3, 5, was it? Yep. Yeah. So this entire episode in a nutshell is Proverbs 3, 5, which right. is basically, so I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> the two characters Stop. at this point in unison go, don't trust your feelings. <laughs> yep. It's yeah. like an anti-PSA. I just needed them to get into a van where a man was promising them puppies, and I'd know I was being punished. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I also, I, he starts his... He, this is such a great example of a Christian starting a thought that they can't finish, right, without admitting they're full of shit. Because he goes... You see, Coates, if we trust our feelings in the moment, we can be tricked. But what he, you know, the follow up to that is we need to like step back and think about things rationally, but he can't go there, right? So he just stops. Says, so you know, we can't trust our feelings in the moment. We need to trust other people's feelings in different moments. Dead people <laughs> who didn't know how the sun or wind worked. Shh. <laughs> You're thinking a lot just now. <laughs> So, yeah, armed with this information, I guess it's time for uh, Bible Man to suit up and go help the little girl and team fuck the gay guy with coats, I guess. Yeah. What's up with the potato cannon? On the <laughs> Did you guys see that thing? <laughs> hey, he said, hey, gay coach, you want to come along? You want to come help? You know, and, and he just happens to have lying on the desk. <laughs> What looks like a spud cannon. I, I I couldn't get my head. And later on, during one of the battles, he has to stop. He has to pull out and activate the gun sight on a cannon to shoot a target that is literally four feet. Yes! Away. Yes! And they show us the sight, and it's so much worse. All of a sudden, he can't see. They show the view through the scope, yes. and it got worse. The sight looks just like the necklace from Evil Dead. Remember the girlfriend's <laughs> necklace? That, yes. That looks just like the necklace from Evil Dead. Wow. <laughs> well, and the other thing we should point out is that at, at that point, when he's sighting the gun with that, he's shooting nets, right? So it's not like he has to zero in directly or anything. <laughs> he needs to hit him from within six feet in any, in any direction. Just a web of red lasers all over the guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where that net's going to go, so you know. I mean, to be fair... We will learn that, spoiler alert, 
he's only going to use the net once, and he's going to be like, give it back. Yeah. Need it, need it <laughs> that again. is what happens. But yeah, I'm jumping I, ahead. I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I looked at that thing, and I thought for sure, it's like, well, I guess when you're a Christian, you can't use that telescope for science. you got to use it for something. <laughs> So, yeah, so they rush out. Coast is armed up with his bazooka, which apparently they just keep lying around in the lab. Probably not a great idea to have the Black Panther looking guy carry around a bazooka in Kansas. I'm just saying. <laughs> Probably doesn't go well. No. So we head back to the church. And if you thought that you were only going to get one visit from the Teeny Bopper dance and rap crew... You have underestimated this show, my friend. <laughs> oh, and it's so exact. And literally, they, they are introduced by, and now, to, to do that again, <laughs> is, is them again. Some more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to do our featured worship song tonight titled, Choreography by Gunpoint. That's, <laughs> that's what I thought when I saw the kids. <laughs> I mean, blank stares, joyless faces, like they cannot wait to get off the stage and off to do whatever it is they want to do. It's, it's like terrifying. a North Korean parade. <laughs> <laughs> and so and while this is going on, too, Bible Man sits next to Kyla it, it, with, the, with the attitude of a guy still apologizing to his girlfriend for fucking her sister or something. <laughs> yeah. He sits down all awkward. Hey, Kyla, how are you? Are you still mad? Um, and this is where they have the it's scary when your parents argue conversation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, this little girl seems embarrassed to be there as well. She should, oh, I think. I love the, the genuine reactions you can see in this girl's face. Bobman's like, yeah, so the, the Bible says we should stop thinking. And Kayla's face is so clearly like, well, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> I'm going to fuck girls and be an atheist when I go to college for 10 years. This is ridiculous. See you at the Seattle live show. <laughs> Literally, her response is, uh-huh. Do you leave now? Yeah, I leave now. <laughs> well, at first, she, he, he throws out his weird apologetic, and the little girl's actual line, written again by Willie Ames, is, the fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> like, that, that's the first thing. And, and then he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I guess that doesn't make any sense. What I mean to say is, sometimes we have no clue what's going on. So, yeah, now I feel better, B Bible man, <laughs> because if I say that, you'll go away and stop. My parents have, have called the police about you. I just want to make sure that you know that they will know if I go missing that your basement is the first one they should check. So, and, and uh, of course, this is where we have to learn that even Bible man has doubts from time to time, but not about Jesus or anything. No, it's, no, it's, no, it's no, general. no, no. I find it ironic. I find it ironic that the child, I don't know what is she, 10 or whatever. The child in the first 90% of the episode is actually the most reasonable and adult person in yes. the cast, right? <laughs> like, shit goes wrong, she feels bad about it, and she doesn't see divine intervention, and she's like, well, this makes no sense. What a bunch of crap. And yeah. <laughs> she's honest about her feelings, and she's a little bit disenfranchised with what the church has told her, and all of these things. And I think to myself, this, man, this, this girl's centered, right? She's centered. <laughs> <laughs> she's much more adult than the other adults featured on screen. <laughs> yeah, no, she's she just should like, be teaching Bible, man. Yeah, <laughs> she's just like, you know, I've really realized that a, a meditation practice is what I needed because, you know, emotions are just projections of thought throughout space. You know what I'm saying, Bible man? Do you have control over your thoughts or do your thoughts have control over you? Come on, let's yes. talk about this Bible, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love to because Bible man tells her like as right before, before he leaves, he's like, don't forget, Jesus never forsakes anyone, which is why kids never die or get raped. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> let me go back and not give examples. Except for that guy that made fun of him at With cross camp who he <laughs> let get eaten by birds. <laughs> we never at any point see the parents. Right? The parents exist completely beyond context. They are these sort of disembodied voices behind the door. Mm -hmm. So it removes, if there was supposed, to, there would have been as if there would have been any real drama. The idea of us really caring about the husband and wife is completely removed because we have no idea. They're faceless. They are almost voiceless. <laughs> yeah. They're completely contextless. So right. we, we don't, we don't even know what they fight about. Yeah. The groundbreaking message, marriage is hard, does not exactly dramatically increase the tension of the viewing audience to me, right? <laughs> marriage is hard. Oh, that's tough. It sucks. Sometimes it's hard for the kids. I mean, this is not anything that's going <laughs> to rattle anybody's cage, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Parents might as well be angry trombones, just like. <laughs> See, I was picturing the Charlie Brown parents, but abusive, yeah. just like. That was uh, one that's, of the Charlie that's, Brown that's, parents uh, being abused. That's yes, so no, listening that's at home. Another ringtone. I just want you to know. That. <laughs> <laughs> We're loading you up today. Um, so yeah, so now the little girl is either fine or really wants him to leave. So she's like, no, yeah, I get it. I get it now. You're you're good, Bible man. You have done your mission. Mm -hmm. So now him and Coates can go kick Shadow's ass. Because to kettlebell music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sprinkly sound, sprinkly sound, sprinkly sound. And then suddenly they're heading down into the basement to find Shadow again. I love to. This is where we get the line where he's like, uh, Coates is like, I feel like Cagney and Lacey and Bioman's like, gay! Faggot! <laughs> <laughs> no, that was wait, weird. Wait, 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 hang on. Did they actually, did he make a Cagney and Lacey reference or is that a gag? Yeah, no, he they actually did. But I, I, were, I, Cag, I, were Cagney and Lacey gay together? <laughs> I don't know. Hang, wait, did he use, the, did he refer to Cagney and Lacey? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. A television yeah. show targeted to 40 something females. <laughs> <laughs> and they put that pop culture reference in a video for children. I in 1995. <laughs> Come <Yeah>. on, kids. <laughs> Tyne Daly? Nobody? How did I miss <laughs> nobody? <laughs> All right. This guy knows. No, nobody? Okay. <laughs> I missed it. I just slipped right by me. <laughs> hey, know your audience, man. <laughs> he's like, I feel like Cagney and Lacey. And he's like, hey, don't say that. That's girly. And he's like, oh, what? You know, and he's like, I'm wearing tights, man. I don't feel like super good about my sexuality to begin with. And as they're having this weird. Ludacris, Ludacris <laughs> slowly comes up behind them. Internalized homophobia. Stop. <laughs> see, you're supposed to do that to that character. See who? <laughs> you're not in the next one. You know who's a bad actor? Willie Ames. Yeah. Willie Ames is a bad actor. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, so now it's time for yet more lightsaber fight Bible quoting. But this time, of course, we've also got Coates circling around the bad guys with his telescope <laughs> bazooka. <laughs> like it's a sword. He's doing yeah. a sword circling thing with a bazooka. And he's like <laughs> holding out in front of him. It's so weird. <laughs> Yeah, apparently they didn't have any idea what to do here. Also, at this point, I wrote he shoots them with a note, and for the life of me, I can't remember why I said that. I don't know what that even means. Net, I just net bazooka. Net. That's it's a right. net okay. bazooka. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you uh, might as well fly in riding like a military satellite and lasso the minions. Like what the fuck? A bazooka for a net in a basement? What are you doing? Me bingo. I, to teach the kids about close quarters combat with, <laughs> <laughs> with the most ordinance humanly possible. Yes. Uh. And, and this is where we have my favorite lines of banter in the entire movie. Bible Man and the Shadow of Doubt, they lock swords right towards the end, and he says, I'll I'll say sorry if you do. And Bible Man says, Tell it to the judge. <laughs> And you can tell they just like had those two lines left over and they were like, it's like a video game <laughs> really playing like Mortal Kombat or Injustice and two characters meet that obviously don't belong in the same universe. So it's like, hi, I'm Batman. Hi, I'm the Z Lord Gurnock. And they just don't have anything to say. So they're just like, ah, that's this. It's just like, I'm sorry if you do. Tell it to the judge. And you're just like, ah, all right. Well, I'm playing Whatever. on hard now. Like when you can't think of the next line and you just go to the Deepak Chopra meme generator and you yeah, just type right. in, tell me something, right? Just make something. Oh, up. my God. Somebody make me a Christian movie banter generator for this. Somebody with a little bit of skill. And I don't think it would take much. Not much. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you might have to watch a couple episodes of this show, which would be tough. Um, but also at the same time, we've got Coates fighting the two minions who, who, by the way, apparently, you know, as we know, Bible man can take out in about one and a half seconds. So he's being a bit of a dick, not jumping over there and taking care of business for his buddy. Um, but at this point, like he starts doing a, a net based bullfighting thing. Oh, it's so good. He still has the bazooka, right? <laughs> Is well, that they, a yep. single fire? They only hold one net. Oh, oh I see. Jesus. <laughs> one net. Yeah, Think it I, through. Well, I know that there were there were different like settings. He turned it to the net <laughs> setting. So there's also a <laughs> missile in there somewhere at the same time. It's behind the net if the net <laughs> fails. There's a setting for just a, a flag that says bang just to fuck with people. <laughs> All right, I better turn that one off. 
<laughs> under the net. And he he manages to run the bad guy through the net thing in sort of like an ole, and then he just does a little Michael Jackson dance, just like yeah, yeah. No, this was ninety eight, by the way. We knew that he <laughs> fucked kids at this point. I just want to point that out. That was not a mystery or anything. Uh, Did at they that actually point. rip off Michael Jackson's music? It wasn't an actual. I mean, it, I felt like they just lifted it. Uh, was it yeah. actually? <laughs> oh yeah. well, they. I mean, they they already ripped off Thriller dance yeah. wise. Just pretty grossly. I don't think they ripped off the music, but this was definitely the move. Yeah, he definitely did the the moonwalk into the little Michael Jackson With the kick spin and the little, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, they're gonna run out of stuff to steal. Season five, it's just like Bible Man hanging a baby out the window. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> this is weird. You could have stopped stealing stuff. <laughs> He's dead now. So and so now Shadow disappears. Yeah, he pulls out his disappearing flask. So he disappears to fight another day. So I guess they've won now. Uh, which th we get the of uh, the brilliant line here. When in doubt, wipe it out. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like they thought that was a saying. <laughs> I, I feel like that's a dog whistle for genocide, right? Just like you know, if Armenia's giving you trouble. Oh God! <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> By the way, my spell check wants it to say. When in doubt, whip it out. Yeah, it does. Yeah. There's a yes. weird <laughs> sexually aggressive moment from my spell check. I don't know what was happening there. To be fair, you did let me use did your you, computer. So do you I feel like you do you guys did not have the same suggestion? Oh no, I did. Okay. I did. Yeah. When I, I I went through and fixed Eli's spelling as I am often want to do, and it said that on every single one of them. It's like, you sure you're not talking about a dick here? You guys are usually talking about dicks. <laughs> Um, and because apparently we haven't suffered enough, there's two more scenes in this movie. Once again, we return to Bible Lab where we're getting another of these urgent Bible alerts. And the, the DEFCON 1 alarm throughout the oh, entire God. building is their ringtone. That's the phone yes. call. That's just a normal phone call again. Well, that's the thing. Because, yeah, because Coates goes over and says, like, I, I have vector lock on the transmission. He's like, I'm localizing it now. I'm like, why don't you use phones? But that's all you're doing is talking to another human being in a different place. I feel like they yelled at the pastor at one point. There, he called on a normal phone. And they're like, "Dude, use the satellite big thing we gave you." <laughs> Jesus, what do we have that for? We put it in the fucking church. It's expensive. I'm just disappointed there haven't been any more inappropriate pop culture references like Cagney and Lacey. I'm stuck on it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> like, when did somebody bring up Lee Majors or Max von Sydow? Yeah, right, or something right. the kids would never know, right? I mean, Seth's going to be falling asleep tonight at 4 a.m. Why Cagney and Lacey? Why, though? Why <laughs> God damn it. This is going to bother me for a month. Yeah, right. No, I'm waiting for episode six where he gets into his, like, silent movie era references, you know? So, okay, so this is, of course, this Phone call is from Pastor Rex, who wants to thank Bible Man for, for fixing everything. Apparently, Kyla's fine because her parents jesus a little more, and so they stopped fighting. So, again, the message of this movie is if you wish hard enough, your parents will stop fighting, kids. You know, if if your parents get divorced, you must not have prayed enough, right? Or you you Absolutely. thought too much? Absolutely, right? <laughs> yeah, or you doubted too much, yeah. If only I'd prayed harder, if only I'd had more faith, if only I hadn't succumbed to doubt, maybe mommy and daddy would still be in love with each other, which is <sighs> really the message of the entire film or the entire series. And it's oh. tragic because, you know, there's a shit ton of kids that are probably feeling that very thing. They're, they live in a real world circumstances where their folks are chewing each other's eyeballs out. And now not only do they have to be a spectator to this insanity, but they now have to bear the burden of feeling like it was their fault. Welcome yeah. to religion and the indoctrination <laughs> of children. <laughs> no kidding. God, that was so disgusting. Like the more it sort of started to sort of unveil. And, and again, like, you know, of course you were in this whole world for, for quite a while. I was never uh religious or I was certainly never Christian enough to, <laughs> to be familiar with Bible, man. Um, so as the, like the, 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 the message of this story was slowly unveiled, I was like, Oh my God, is this really where they're, they're going to walk this back? It's so they're not going to nope. walk this back. Not enough time. <laughs> That's where they landed. Yep. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. And then, of course, we have to have one last call back to that hilarious please joke. They milked that four <laughs> times. Uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. <laughs> it was skin crawl. It was like watching a comedian bomb on stage. Yes. Uncomfortable. It just went on <laughs> and on. Right. Because at the very end, the last, the punchline of it is he's like, please. And the computer's like, still no. 
<laughs> You're still black, man. Sorry. And as if we haven't been through enough, now it's time for some direct address with Bible Man. Bible Man basically just comes up, turns his chair around backwards, you know. Hey, kids, let's rap. Oh, God, right. it's so good. He literally, the message is, look, kids, sometimes it feels like God doesn't answer your prayers, but you're, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. Shut up. Yeah. You, you shut up. <laughs> and remember, and like, like Jesus was going to dojo storm the set and challenge him to Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He goes, and remember, Jesus is the only real superhero. You know, me, right. and, <laughs> me and John Edwards using the same caveats here. Don't want anyone to, <laughs> me and James Van Prague want you to know this is for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> Only real superhero. Ludacris just like slowly floats a coin through the guy's face and walks <laughs> off. <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the theme of the thing is like, you know how prayer never works yet? Well, <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Christianity, also known as mm, yet the religion. <laughs> yet. Yet. He's coming. And I got to say, you have to stick around to see the best of this movie. I noticed this as I as I'm like basically closing everything down. I still have the movie up playing. The credits were going through. I shit you not. In the credits, it says catering, Big Bubba's barbecue. <laughs> so credit to you, Seth Golden Corral. Yeah, it's the Big Bubba's barbecue singers. <laughs> I was close. I was close. <laughs> you picked a weird superpower, Seth. Can I give you that feedback? You picked a weird. <laughs> All right, so obviously we want to keep this series going forever. So I'd like to close off tonight by helping out the writers over at Bible Man HQ. I'm wondering if any of you guys have suggestions for other villains that we can pit Bible Man against. Ooh, uh, I'm saying Mixed Fiber Man is, is <laughs> M Mr. Fiber Mixilplick. Yeah, something like that. I like it. I like it. I'm jotting it down. Send it to Willie. How about wandering eye with his henchmen yoga pants? <laughs> <laughs> I have a suggestion for a, a, a future villain for Bible Man, but I only want to do it in my movie trailer voice. Would that be all right? Oh, oh by all means. Right. Yeah. So this would be my suggestion. All right, here we go. In a world gone mad, one villain has the power to drive God completely over the edge. Get ready for Baron Fig Tree Man. That's all I <laughs> Sprout, damn you! We just did the story on the radio of Jesus and the fig tree. It's the only story that's stuck in my head where Jesus gets pissed <laughs> off at a tree. He right? kills it. I mean, he, God knows everything in the universe, past, present. He knows everything I'm thinking. He knows how many hairs are on my head. The only fucking thing he doesn't know is how... <laughs> is when figs are in season. That's the only thing Jesus does not know. And that's why I wanted to... Baron Fig Tree Man is my nominee for a new villain for Bible Man. So. Oh, God. You know, I, I feel like, because he's not making these shows anymore, I feel like we could get the rights for like 11 bucks. Like if we all just pulled in what was in our like in our car ashtrays right now, we could probably get the rights to Bible Man, and we could have so much like fun. Half a gram of Coke, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's more or less than ten bucks. So there you go. Yeah, no, no, that's more. And uh, now, Seth, I have to ask, where does this now rank in your list of worst podcasting memories? Where does this rank in my <laughs> list of? Well, actually, I tried to disconnect about 25 minutes ago. I just, you know, I, <laughs> I Eli figured you out. out. <laughs> Zencaster, they can't hang up. You can only kick them. <laughs> no, actually, one of my favorite things to do ever is to ridicule and and really tweak and poke fun at and, and have fun with a lot of the stuff that, you know, religion likes to take so seriously. And the truth of it is, even though, you know, they were doing a lot of that wink, wink stuff with the camera, this is what they consider to be serious business. The the targeting of young kids. I was one of those kids. I, I mean, not a Bible man, but we had Bible related stuff. And it was just mm. a constantly reinforced baseball bat over the head. I mean, I, my, I'm, I'm actually working on a, a speech which sort of colors a little more deeply just how intense the indoctrination was. But I mean, 
you know, everywhere you go, you're looking at Christian comic books, you watch Christian cartoons, you got Christian music, there's Christian coloring books, there's Christian clothing, there's Christian, you got Christian friends. And so everywhere you go, this type of stuff exists because the church sort of props it up. Oh, you know, you don't need to go out into the world. We have something for you that's Bible friendly, that's Jesus friendly. And and that's why Bible man is a thing. That's why, and I know people who've shown this stuff to their kids because they're terrified of, you know, Batman and Superman and, and the Avengers and, you know, heaven forbid they ever see Deadpool. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, so I don't know. Spider Man had a crush on a black girl in this latest one. So, uh, <laughs> Deadpool so, might not be the worst one Marvel's got. I enjoy, I enjoyed the chance to get together with you guys and just sort of, uh, you know, pull back the layers and show everybody the insanity of just what religious institutions are capable of, especially when there's a buck involved, right? Right. And boy, did this show deserve it. Well, I got to say, it's been an absolute blast having you along for the ride. And of course, if our listeners would like to hear more from Seth, be sure to check out the Thinking Atheist podcast. You'll find that linked on the show notes for this episode, along with links to his YouTube channels and links to buy his books. Seth, thanks again so much for your time tonight. Big fun. Thank you guys for having me. And while that's going to do it for our review of Bible Man, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to make it super fucking clear that Eli was just kidding about the show ending at episode 100. So, Eli, please <laughs> tell us what's on deck. There is another episode next week. I'm not on it. I'm leaving the show. Um, no, nope. <laughs> no. <Nope. nope. laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Can we not? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so... Serious it's, answer. It's so funny the way Eli sabotaged our career and brought our company down over a running joke. No, it's Eli will be here next week. I will commit again. to this bit forever. <laughs> How did we think our careers were going to end? From Heath? No. It's always going to be me. I want it to be on my turn. I just don't want a tearful apology. Fuck you, comedy sale. The yeah. anchor, whatever. <laughs> so... Spinnaker. Some people are anchored. Whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> the Mark. We're watching The Mark. All right. And this is this is a two-parter? Oh, yeah. This so is a two-parter. We at least get to episode 102. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I was not able to watch. I was not able to find a preview for this one. So, like, uh, what, what, are we, what are we looking at here? All right. So, an underground mercenary marine guy gets injected with the Mark of the Beast and the Antichrist <laughs> and the good guys are... <laughs> are trying to get him, but he's on a plane. It's a plane movie. Plane movie. The Mark. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm so excited. I've had it with these Devil motherfucking plane. antichrists on this motherfucking <laughs> plane. Awesome. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 100 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Seth Andrews of the Thinking Atheist podcast and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that have helped make the show go for 100 episodes and counting. Woo! If Woo! you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, The Skeptic Rat, and Citation Needed, available on iTunes and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. And all other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark. Both were used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions Promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Ludacris invented a time machine killed Judd Nelson, and starred in The Breakfast Club. Kyla went on to be a champion pole dancer. Married Tom. Coates stabbed the computer to death, but ended up being acquitted anyway. Yeah, very important. I, I tell you right off the bat, um, Eli doesn't really mean it, Seth. I just, you know, just <laughs> as a general rule, um, Heath does. We're going to pretend sometimes like he doesn't. He does, but uh, <laughs> for far more disturbing reasons. All right. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved. Divorce is a serious thing. To the extent that you can save your marriage, you should. No one knows that better than the attorneys at Cordell and Cordell.
Attorney CPA Joe Cordell. As many of you know, we represent men in domestic relations cases. And most of our clients are captive to a process they didn't choose. If they could have, they would have saved their marriage. But their wives told them they want out. Suddenly at issue are the assets they've been a lifetime accumulating. What's more important, their role in their children's lives. If you're confronted with a marriage you can't save, we hope that you'll consider Cordell and Cordell. The attorneys at Cordell and Cordell work to help men maximize their role in their children's lives. Contact the domestic litigation firm of Cordell and Cordell to schedule an appointment with one of our firm's San Francisco area attorneys, a partner men can count on. 650-389-1111. Online at CordellCordell.com. That's CordellCordell.com. Offices in San Francisco, San Mateo, and San Jose. Se habla español. Legal services available in English and Spanish. Kimberly Llewellyn licensed in California.